Binadamu tuna mambo twajitakia makubwa kila siku twaambiwa lakini hatusiki Binadamu tuna mambo twajitakia makubwa kila siku twaambiwa lakini hatusiki Bwana Yesu anarudi ishara zimetimia ndugu yangu dada yangu utapatikana wapi Bwana Yesu anarudi Good morning brethren I want to welcome you to our today's sermon which is brought to you by Reverend Oluwaje but before we continue I want us to hear the readings which uh, is taken from the book of 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 to 9 and I read or because of these surpassingly great revelations therefore In order to keep me from becoming coincited I was given a thorn in my flesh a messenger of Satan to torment me three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me let us pray heavenly father i'm just a mere piece of vessel and you are the master speak to us as i speak to your people so that lord we may hear your message for us today we are seated before your throne so that lord you can talk to us in the name of the father i pray and do believe amen we know that we are saved by grace through faith and prayer is the only way we can communicate to our god or express our desires to god paul was a dear servant of god who worked tirelessly as an evangelist to evangelize in almost the whole of roman empire single handedly and he reached a point when he was in pain to an extent to, or to a point whereby he decided to go to god so that god can help him or relieve him from this pain so when praying we expect god to give us what we have asked for or a better one so paul was afflicted with what he described as a thorn in the flesh this caused him constant pain it was a serious issue to him that he took it to prayer and to ask god to relieve him from this pain three times pleading with god to take it away but look at what god's answer from the verse we have read above was god didn't remove paul's pain a burden at all but told paul that i'm not going to remove it away but mark my words that my grace is sufficient not this god did not say or did not answer or tell paul that my grace is sufficient in difficulty but he said my grace is sufficient for you paul asked for deliverance from one ordeal but god granted him grace for every trial throughout his life i know that many times we have gone before the lord to ask god to help us or to give us or to answer our prayers the way we expected it but many times god has not answered it the way we want it and this also happened to paul because if you look at paul paul was an evangelist when he knew very well that even as i go before the lord god will answer my prayer as his servant so our god we know that god is omniscient is omnipotent is omni present and he knows our struggles he knows what we are going through as his children and sometimes we normally go before the lord expecting much from god but that is not what god is seeing in us so he knows what is good for us maybe paul would have boasted and would have taken glory of god if god would have answered his prayer but god knew that there were much more challenges coming ahead of him and he would still be there for him so my brothers and sisters 
the coronavirus has become a pawn to us. It is a pawn to the whole nation. It is a pawn to the flesh of the whole world. People have prayed. People have cried for God to take it away. But God did not take it away. Or God doesn't want to take it away because somehow, somewhere, some people will take glory for themselves instead of glory going back to God. And what is the answer of God to us? He is still telling us that his grace is sufficient. Maybe you have prayed over your marriage. Maybe you have been praying over your children for them, for their disobedience. Maybe you have been praying for a job which you want God to give you a job. You have tarmacked long enough. Maybe you have been praying or looking for a fiancé. Maybe you have been praying for a baby. Maybe you are worried about losing your job. So your business is not diving, and many more get to know that his grace is sufficient. That is the answer he gave Paul. And Paul, being a committed brother, he was struggling, and this thing was paining him. He could not go to his normal duties of evangelism, and he was crying. But note that God did not leave him, but God told him that my grace is sufficient in whatever situation you are. So therefore, that struggle is an opportunity to help you move close to God as his child, more than you would have ever moved when you are in a, you are in a free state. So God knows what is best for us. He knows what we are supposed to get at that particular time. There are more to come, floods, earthquakes, but let us remember that God's grace is sufficient. He will get you through them all, only if you remain committed to God. In the book of Psalm 37 verse 5, the Bible says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. We need to remain committed to the word of God. Paul never deviated from the word of God. He never went or he never looked aside for some help, but he remained committed to the word of God because he knew that God is the only source where he can or he could get help. Many people have lost hope because of their prayers, which has not been answered. But what is it which God is telling us today? That remain calm and get to know that his grace is sufficient. You have cried to the Lord, you have fasted, you have done whatever you could do as a human being. But God is still reminding us that his grace is sufficient. I want to give you this uh, example or this uh, story of a pencil maker. A pencil maker taught, taught his pencil five lessons. The first lesson, everything you touch will always leave a mark. The second point is that the mistake you make can always be corrected. Then the third point the most important is what is inside you. The fourth point, in life, you will undergo painful sharpening, which will make you a better pencil. Then the last point is, to be the best, you must allow yourself to be held and be guided by that hand that holds you. From this story of a pencil maker, we need to know that sometimes God allows us to go through a painful sharpening in order for us to be the best. And also, as a human being or as a child of God, we need to allow God to hold us because if we are held by God, at the end of the day, we will be a better people or he will guide us to the line, right line whereby we shall be great people. So my brother, my sister, remember that the third point talks about what is inside you. If the Holy Spirit is in you, you will remain focused and committed unto the, uh, to the Lord despite the situation or the struggling or the affliction you are going through, knowing that at the end of the day, you will become a winner. So God is looking at you, God is watching you, and is preparing you for the great things to come. So wherever you are, 
be encouraged. Let us be encouraged that God knows what we are going through and is ready to lift us out of this situation the way he knows that it is best for us in order for his glory, for the glory to go back to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God the Almighty, I want to thank thee, Lord, for this word which you have reminded us that your grace is sufficient. I know that we have been crying. Many people have been praying over issues, over the affliction. But Lord, what you are reminding us is that we should remember that your grace is sufficient. Look at that lady who is looking for a job. Look at that brother who is now struggling uh, to put himself together because he's just about to lose his job and yet he has children. Father, may you be there for them. We know that your grace is sufficient for us. As we lift our hands in a sign of surrender, may you take over and give us what you know that is best for us, for your glory, because we are your children and we need you, Lord, to guide us. I know that through prayer, we are expecting much and more from you. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us, knowing, Lord, that you are going to lift us and to give us the desires of our hearts, which you know that is best for us. For I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and do believe. Amen.